A common complaint that I often hear from video game journalists and critics is that video game companies deny that their games are political when these same journalists and critics say that they are. When I've noticed that it's not wrong that the when the game or developer says that the game is not political that they are absolutely correct what the critics and journalists are not understanding is there is a difference between political theming and having politics in your game and theming isn't quite the correct term but it's the easiest one to help understand exactly what I'm talking about. You build your game around the idea of politics. Uh, you have political features or political ideas in your game without it being political. Uh, I'm trying to explain it as best I can. It's going to make more sense as I go on. But that's the general idea that I'm trying to put across. It's one of those things that it's hard to explain just by itself. I fully admit that. Now, this latest issue that happened is because of Tom Clancy's Elite Squad, in which they had a raised fist as a symbol for their villain group. A, a corporatist villain group, by the way. That does make a difference. Now... <clears throat> The the thing that the journalists and the critics have been going on for for the last week or so is that, oh, Ubisoft says that they don't put politics in their game, but look at this. That's obviously politics. N no. Uh, the First of all, the argument that I've seen used is that it's trying to be a little BLM, which it's not. The raised fist as a symbol has been used... Arguably since the French Revolution, but more widely accepted since the early 1900s uh, by, uh, uh, by other revolutions or other uprisings. The earliest recorded group to use it as a symbol was the German Communist Party in the 1930s, which explains so much about the modern day, doesn't it? It is not tied to BLM, so that point is completely off. And secondly, having a symbol, a just a generic symbol in your game does not make it political. They have a corporate villain group uh, attempting to hide in the shadows and be the and present itself as something good. Hence why they would use a raised fist. They are tr it's the whole villain subverting kind of idea. At least that's my idea for why they would use that without it being political. They aren't doing that because, oh, BLM is viewed as good, ergo. They are doing that because largely the raised fist has been used by revolution people's revolutions. It's very easy to explain how this isn't political, and yet that takes just a slight bit of nuance and understanding of history and ideas, which, those are very uh, heavy concepts for a gaming journalist. They'd rather just scream racism. <clears throat> you want an idea of what actually is political in a game? I would argue... Madden 2021, not just adding Colin Kaepernick to the game, but making his stats better than half of the starting quarterbacks in the game. So as a free agent quarterback, he is actually, I believe, the either the best or the second best. Uh, I'd have to look into that again. But he is so highly ranked as a uh, free roster quarterback. He is better than such starters as... Ben Roethlisberger. That's not even a joke. 
That is absolutely a political statement by the developers of Madden. Whether it be for virtue signal points or because they genuinely believe in the causes that uh, Kaepernick espouses, your guess is as good as mine. But to have him in the game and to have him statted so highly when he absolutely shouldn't be because there is no reality where he should be viewed as that good a quarterback, that is a political statement. It, uh, it, it's this weird thing where the, the media and journalists don't seem to understand theming over politics. I've never heard a complaint about Crusader Kings or Euro Europa Universalis, for example. Those games are absolutely political in that they are themed around politics of the day. They are themed around politics for 1000 AD. They are themed around politics for 1600 AD. You never hear a complaint about that, that, oh, the these games that uh, uh, are obviously political are saying they aren't political, because it, it, it's this weird thing of, they seem to, A, focus on modern being roughly World War II and beyond, though sometimes early 1900s, but B, if this was an issue of people saying, get politics out of games, which is another point they always bring up, then people would be complaining about Crusader Kings. People would be complaining about uh, Europe Universalis. Here's what actually is political, or shoving politics in, or personally political. The, uh, there was at one point a interview with the developers for Crusader Kings 3, and they said that they were going to be removing Deus Vault from the game. The game, titled Crusader Kings, was going to be removing the term Deus Vault. That is absolutely political. That right there is a political move on the behalf of the developers. The, the theming of the game is not political, because you are effectively presenting that in a this is how things happened, this is the politics of the day way. Whereas, removing Deus Vault because it's offensive, that is absolutely a political move by the developers. Th there's the big difference that people seem to not fully grasp. Typically, when something is political, the developers are very happy to tell you it is. Whereas, when something is just politically themed, they will say, no, it's not political, because it's not. Just because you set a game in the modern day, well, let's, let's use another Ubisoft game as an example. Uh, a game set in the modern day, where the White House was taken over by terrorists, and you are leading a uh, military group trying to retake it. That is not political. Having a game around the White House is not inherently political. It's politically themed because it's, it gets you thinking about the generalized ideas of politics, i.e. politicians, White House, government, those kind of things. But it is not trying to have a political message in there. Great examples of this. Democracy and Political Machine. Both of those games, no one has ever complained that they are political, because they aren't. They present politics in a generalized fashion, and you, the player, determine what is and isn't your cup of tea, or how you want to play, or what you want to do. It's not a case where if you say, want to go abortion, in those games, and the game stops and says, no, that's improper, you can't do that, uh, or, yes, you absolutely need to do that, uh, trying to stop abortion is terrible. It, it's, it's a generalized pre presentation of the idea, not 
something that tells you one way or the other how to feel about it. It's this, it's this nuance that the, the modern gaming media does not understand, because again, that would hurt their itty bitty brains. <sighs> I really get sick and tired of hearing so many people say that, especially because the game is set in the modern age and it deals with political themes such as war, terrorism, uh, politicians, government, that it is political and that there, there's no way that it can't uh, not be political. No. These games are themed around ideas of politics. They are not political. Again, typically the developers will be very happy to tell you that they are being political. And I do not believe that these are cases. These are just having things set in periods, in places. Giving you ideas, uh, but in the same way that having a game set in front of a medieval castle gives you an idea of, oh, this is a, a medieval fantasy style game. <sighs> and this is done in other mediums too. This isn't just something specific to video games. A great example of this in comics was the Lex Luthor running for president arc from DC, which was a great arc in general, but it wasn't a political arc. It uses political themes, i.e. Lex Luthor running for president, but it is not being political in that. It's telling a story that revolves around a political idea of the presidency. The counterpoint to that one is Marvel, when they had the that one artist for the cover of one of their illustrations have MODOK, but with President Trump's face in place of MODOK's. That was absolutely political. The author has said as much. It, it was presenting, oh, Trump is a supervillain kind of thing. Th there's a very big difference, I would hope, that you can see between those two. And it's the same in game. It's the same in movies, television, etc. You're, you aren't saying Independence Day is political, are you? I, God, I would hope fucking not. It involves the president and blowing up the White House. There go. It must be political. <laughs> uh, kill me. I just get so sick and tired of the gaming media saying that anything that revolves around, at the very least, modern day politics must be political. Because they're too fucking stupid to think otherwise. And so they have to basically insult you and say, you're the idiot if you don't get it. Just because something is built around an idea does not mean that it is based on or it is inserting such thing into the game. Uh, if a developer or studio says that their game isn't political, I tend to believe them unless it is so blatant in the game itself. Not, not the setting, not the general idea, but the story itself. If, if that is so blatant that it's impossible to ignore, yes. That rarely ever happens, though. It's typically just a setting, an idea, a concept. And then there's nothing that goes beyond that. I know this isn't going to change. I know that this is going to be a thing that the gaming media just keeps going on about. That anything set in the modern day that deals with things that they consider political, war, government, etc., is political. And that's why I just I do not trust these people. They are too stupid to understand themes and ideas rather than actual politics.
And we wonder why places like Kotaku UK are shutting down. Uh, this has been Math Machine telling gaming journalists to stop inserting their politics into games that are not inherently political. The irony on many levels. Peace out.